Well, the case study for January 2023, Unit 2, has arrived. If you don't have a copy of it yet, ask your teacher to her, uh, get the exams officer to look on Interchange. It should be available for access now. So this is what it looks like. As you can see, the instructions are as they usually are. You're not allowed to take this copy into the um, exam room. Now, you can write notes all over this if you want to. You can highlight it. You can scribble on it. You can draw cartoons on it. It really doesn't matter what you do with this. It's just for you to revise from. You're not allowed to take it into the exam. You will get a fresh copy when you turn up to the exam room on the day of the exam alongside the exam paper. So you're not allowed to take any notes into the exam with you. Tells us the document is four pages long, so just make sure you've got all of the pages when you get it. There's a nice scenario, it's about GP uh, motorbike racing. It says there's a team based in England and every year the team races at different circuits across the world. The races normally take place over a weekend, there's practice sessions, qualifying sessions um, that happen uh, on the two days before the weekend and they're held at the same places um, every year so they just move from one country to the other a bit like Formula One so um, you're always following the same schedule it tells us that there are different regions where the races happen and there's a sample here of a race uh, calendar so straight away we can start to think about the fact that some of this information is global it's gonna occur uh, in different parts of the world. These races are going to occur in different parts of the world. So there's going to be information moving globally from one country to another. We can see the calendar. So again, we can start to think about the way that this information has been formatted. We can start to think about data types that might have been used in uh, any databases or any calendar tables such as this one. We can also see here that we have countries like Holland and Germany and the UK and they're all fine because we know that they're um, part of the European GDPR. Thailand, well that could be a different story. Australia, well they've probably got their own GDPR because they're part of the British Commonwealth but it's definitely worth investigating Thailand in terms of their GDPR because questions may come up about what their data protection laws are like. It tells us the teams come from all over the world. Yamaha are in Italy, Honda are in Monte Carlo, and so on. Each team leaves their base country at the start of the race season and then just moves from one place to the next as the race um, schedule progresses. And there's four specialist areas which are noted in these four bullet points here. And then there's another technical crew located back in the base country. So again, there's information going to be moving backwards and forwards from different countries back to the base team in the home country. Then it tells us that each motorbike is fitted with certain types of sensor and these collect information about the performance of the bike during the practice sessions and then during the races themselves. The data is automatically uploaded to cloud storage. So we can start to think about data collected from sensors what that data might be what format it might be in does it need in some way to be manipulated or processed into some kind of useful information what does cloud storage look like where is that accessible from what's the security like on that does it have encryption and multi-factor authentication can it be accessed on any device including personal devices it tells us that this cloud storage area gives the technical crew access to trackside results. And it tells us that this data is converted into a graph. So there may be questions around the collection and storage and manipulation of data and about information formats and about data analysis tools. It tells us then the crew uses this information to make adjustments to the performance of the bike. Um, and it gives us some examples of what that might look like there. During the actual race, the technical team give orders to the riders through um, a radio system in the um, helmet. Each race team also has a, a web page dedicated to the riders. <clears throat> so if you think about the information that's coming through to the riders, they are obviously going to respond to whatever the team are telling them 
uh, that comes through their radio so there's information here thinking about the data collected from the sensors thinking about the information that's going through to the rider uh, these are real-time decisions that are being made so there's bound to be questions about the usefulness of this information coming in on time about it being accurate there's also going to be questions possibly about what if uh, a rival team is able to intercept these messages or send messages to the rider or somehow tamper with the uh, sensor information that's going to affect massively the outcome of that race so the website itself it's going to be questions about um, the type of information that you can display on websites there's going to be questions potentially about formats that can be put on websites about the accessibility of that information on that website it also tells us that they have blogs so there could potentially be questions about again information formats and styles and how they look on blogs and so on and then it goes on to tell us that also on this website there are live streaming uh, opportunities for people to watch the race as it happens or if you want to pay a subscription then there's also the opportunity to um, as well as watching live you know watch the video after the event so there potentially are questions here about the storage of data on different websites in different countries there's potential um, questions about the security of the website about the um, details that are being stored such as customer information uh, the subscription fees the way that they pay so credit card storage all those kinds of things there's possibly going to be security issues surrounding the storage of that data there may be questions about obfuscating the credit card details or the passwords and things like that and then we've got a little bit of information about commentaries and again there could potentially be questions here about information formats uh, about the nature of these commentaries um, and uh, you know whether they're in a format that again people can access okay so at the bottom you'll see there are some bullet points and the um, exam board very kindly point us in the direction of the topics that we need to look at so I would suggest you get yourself a copy of this document converted to word go through use the commenting um, facility built into the software and begin to make some um, connections between what's in the case study and what's listed in the specification so we can see here there's going to be stuff about information sources what are those information sources check them against the spec to make sure you understand those and especially in relation to use on a website and so on or in databases etc information formats again there's a list of these in the spec you should have covered them um, but just make sure you go and understand uh, you know what those are especially the advantages and disadvantages of using them data types that's going to generally relate to any questions around databases and storage of data um, but if you have a look at the information styles these are the same kinds of things information styles and classifications they're noted here so make sure you understand personal private public all those classifications of data uh, including things like sensitive and confidential and, and which ones might apply in this situation the importance of good quality information well we've already considered like what if effect or impact it might have on the race on the fans on the results of the race if the information is not valid or not timely etc data analysis tools make sure you understand what those are uh, and how they might be used in this scenario and how they might be helpful to people accessing the data in a way that's understandable information security so this is uh, the CIA of information security um, make sure you understand what those are and then think about what that looks like in terms of the logical the software based protections and the physical protections that could be put in place to help with keeping all of this important data for the teams for the riders for the customers uh, on the website etc safe and sound 
so on the whole it doesn't look like a terrible um, case study if you you know read through it properly make sure you link it to the spec understand all the different things and how they might relate to this particular scenario when you get to the part A of the exam hopefully you'll be well prepared